welcome everybody to episode 60 of the Guild Mag podcast. We are back for another week with Sandra. Say hi, Sandra. Hi. Hello. How have you been? We've been off for a week, but we are back. Been good? Your uh, mic did the oh, same I do this thing every week like for you. Doing I just, like, the past couple of shows yeah. on me. I don't know why it does that whenever we stream, but it pre- does. Just pretend you can hear me for now. Um, now I can hear you. <laughs> so yeah, we are back at a brand new time. Uh, so that's 9 p.m. GMT, uh, 10 p.m. if you're in the UK, and 2 p.m. Pacific time. So basically an hour later than we normally do it. Uh, that's still every Thursday, twitch.tv forward slash guildmac. Um, so because we weren't here last week, we are kind of bundling everything we want to talk about last week with the current event stuff into this week's show because mm-hmm. there's not much else to talk about anyway. So we're going to do like two weeks worth of discussion, hopefully in one episode. Um, yeah. So as always, everyone who's watching us live, um, feel free to share your thoughts as we go along. Um, so we're going to kick off with just a rundown of the general news as we do every week before we head into the uh, current events discussion. So game news, in case you haven't logged in in the last two weeks, uh, 4th of October brought a small game update um, with the latest current event stuff that says something unusual is happening at Gilscale Pond, uh, which is in the Fields of Ruin. Um, And this is part of the new current event stuff where there are basically class one and class two magic rifts that have appeared across Tyria. um, And you need to attempt to stabilize them, essentially. Um, Which which has been interesting, which we will um, talk about in a little bit bit of a throwback to guild wars one with the uh, rift events that were that well events missions you remember those in like i have no idea i think it was I, I was ch- i'm trying desperately to remember and i have no idea what you're all about they were like big black things you had to like close a bunch in like lion's arch and kamadan i think you had to do some in kanang as well in kc my mind has gone to if i saw like a video or something i probably instantly yeah. remember but i have like mm-hmm. no idea so well, there you go. well if anyone in chat knows what uh remembers them then if you can find like an image or something because I'm, I'm just like what <laughs> oh, um so there was also a new achievement um called the burden of choice uh it's also part of the current event stuff um and the like tldr story of this is all about clearing your player character of the magic like the excess magic that they've absorbed from the um, bloodstone fen explosion um, and there is a really useful guide produced by Dulphy, as always, on how to complete this stuff. Because without a guide for the magic rifts, it could be a bit confusing. I know mm-hmm. um, I just straight up use the guide because I'm terrible at stuff Can like that by out? myself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the current event stuff. There is also a sneaky new portal in Lion's Arch Aerodrome, um, which is the raid lobby that came with the 4th of October patch. Um, so hopefully new raid coming soon, maybe a sneaky little, yeah, yeah. So, I'm thinking, uh, we'll I'm thinking yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm super, I mean, we've talked about this loads over, mm-hmm. I don't know, like last year or whatever, like what we want from raids and new, new raids mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, so yeah. I, I was wondering too, you know, since it came, uh, some people I saw on Reddit, uh, when I think it was last week when this, or the week before. Uh, they were speculating whether or not it would be sort of a festival raid, um, which would be interesting idea. Again, an interesting idea. Um, or would they be using the portal to just enter into like the Mad King's Labyrinth instead of clogging up Lion's Arch? Although Lion's Arch is really spread out now, so it's yeah, not like it's I don't, an excess of traffic. I don't see that happening. I think it because I mean we knew there was a new raid. Well, we didn't know, but you know we kind of speculated that the would potentially be a new another new raid um before the year's over um mm-hmm. and so it's kind of a very it's very reminiscent of what they did with you know like wing three and you know basically was was the aerodrome there for wing two not no I not not originally don't i don't think, think. So. Um, i don't think so originally but yeah they certainly did it for wing three where they had a new portal there um mm-hmm. before it was actually released you know it's a little tease like oh you know it's look what's coming um so I, I think a lot of people have been have been kind of under the impression that maybe it will happen in November, like between the Halloween and the Winter's Day stuff. So I'm that'd be cool. Give us I'm give us a nice hopeful. bridge of things to do. 
Yeah. Um, so speaking uh, of Halloween, so Halloween is coming this Tuesday on the 18th yes. of October for two weeks. Um, mm -hmm. So it's basically the same content as last year. So the Shadow of the Mad King event. Um, it doesn't sound like we're going to get anything new um, this year. I know, I think last year they had, they had like some new rewards and stuff, didn't they? Um, mm -hmm. But I don't think we're going to get anything like that this year. But it's nice to have Halloween back anyway. It's always like Halloween and Winter's Day are like things I really look forward to every year, like going back as far as Guild Wars 1. Um, yeah, I'm so. looking forward to the Labyrinth. Um, I, I like yeah. that. Yes. I like the, the fights in there. I think some of the bosses in there have always been a bit <laughs> challenging, <laughs> especially for uncoordinated Zergs. I think um, I think a lot of people like the labyrinth just for the farming aspect of it because well that too it's so there, there's, there's that lucrative. too but I like to, I just like going in there there's a lot of candy corn that usually drops out of there and if they do give us some nice um, in-game rewards that we can trade that disgusting candy in for <laughs> <laughs> um, that would be cool yeah no I'm I'm really looking forward to it. just as like it's just a nice little break to have um, Halloween content for a couple of weeks so yeah on Tuesday 18th of October uh, Halloween um, and there are some Halloween related items in the gem store, mm -hmm. as always. Um, so uh, we have ferocious cat ears for 400 gems, which I is am so happy. To cat ears back. have finally come to Guild Wars 2 for your I character. Uh, and they, they were a Halloween reward, weren't they? When they first came in? I think, I, I think that's how I got them in Guild Wars 1. Maybe I don't. I don't remember. But it's just. I don't remember. I just saw them. And I thought, you know what? Of course, of course, we've got cat ears at Halloween now. Um, so I expect to see many a female human running around with them in game. Mm -hmm. Will you be buying them? Will I buy them? Of yeah. course I will, because <laughs> I have to add them to my collection of things that have carried over from Guild Wars One. Of course. Um, so we also have a load of returning items. So the Phantom's hood is back for two hundred gems. The Bloody Prince's outfit is back for 700, um, and the kind of bone minion-y um, okay. harvesting tools mm -hmm. are back for um, a thousand gems each, as all kind of harvesting tools are. And the Grenth hood skin is back for 400 gems at 20% off. So some good deals in the gem <laughs> store. Um, and whilst we're talking about it, uh, so from last week, not this week, uh, there was Tammy's outfit that was released, brand new outfit for 700 gems, um, which I think looks okay. I'm not, I don't know, like outfits in that style. It reminds me of like the Aether Blade, um, yeah, like armor outfit. I can't remember if it's an outfit or an armor. Piece. It was armor. Um, I bought the light skin one of the Aether Blade, and but the other two never really appealed to me. But yeah, I don't know. I think the the Tammy's outfit it looks good on Asura, <laughs> but I'm not really sold on it on other races. I think so it I looks. Haven't it looks good on timey, but like when I tried it on like my char or even like human, it just doesn't. I doesn't don't know. It, it doesn't grab me as uh, like as other outfits do. Um, mm -hmm. But if it if it, you fancy it, you can get it for seven hundred gems. Uh, mm -hmm. There's also the spectral glider for five hundred, which I really like actually. Um, I picked it up. Oh, did you? I picked it up because it was dyeable, and I wanted to see um, how it would look when it's dyed. Because when it's undyed, it's quite very. F it's quite flashy and um, a bit blinding. <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit photosensitive anyway, so it was a bit blinding. Um, but I started to just mess around with the different dye combinations because you can add two dyes to it. And you can get some really cool effects yeah, by just was... the combination. So I thought that was neat. I, I do really like it, actually. I was I meant to pick it up um, last week, but I haven't because I'm still rocking the like Heart of Thorns pre-order glider. And I just you see are. everyone else with all these other cool ones. I'm like, I need to... I need to improve my glider game. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I noticed on Reddit when it first came out, there were a few people um, that were like, it looks a kind of like a little bit too bright to actually in-game, so you can't see the colour as well. Have you noticed that? I noticed, well, I did a preview. I haven't actually, I, after I died it, I didn't actually fly around with <laughs> my character. <laughs> really? But I was like having fun just trying to get the, uh, I got a good flame effect on it by combining some really weird colors together so i've got that on my engineer i need to fly around with him but we're undyed it's very bright and like i said yeah a bit hard on the eyes um, <laughs> <laughs> well um as you 
Tammy's die kit is uh, was also released in the gem store last week uh, for 125 gems each. Um, so yeah, that's the gem store news in a nutshell. Um, so some of the news that I actually forgot to <laughs> kind of go over. Um, so there are new hungry cats. Uh, so there's now nine of them, one for each class. And you, I you, have you, so you, you can take this one. <laughs> I have so many. I've got, I think, all of the hungry cats except for these last nine. Just I haven't had time to get in and, and go chase them down. But what I really liked about this one is that you have to go in and find the correct cat on the while playing the correct class and give the cat specific food. It will only accept that food if you're on, like, say, an, an engineer or a revenant, etc. So, but yes, my my home instance is getting really full of these crazy cats <laughs> just a crazy cat lady i know and i know i saw on um i think it was reddit and on twitter that people were saying it would have been cool if they'd given us the ferocious cat ears as like a reward for collecting all of the hungry cats i'm like yeah that would have been thematically that would have been know, a nice thematic match we were having well, this conversation in uh, when we were raiding when you saw them come out and i was just like there's no the, the amount i bet the amount of money that arena have made from people spending gems on those cat ears is is, oh, yeah. is just too much to pass up. Oh, I it's, bet. Yeah. I, just the amount of people that would have bought them. And mm -hmm. I bet you this is not the last cat ear thing we see in Guild Wars 2. I bet you there's going to be more variations in the future. Because it's just one know. of those things that people just buy in like... Well, it's like the bunny ears one too. Yeah. It's... We haven't seen the I last one. I don't one. know how much variety you could really do on cat ears though. Because if they're diable, like the bunny ears are... Um, then I don't know. you can the you can really just customize them to your somewhat to your heart's content. <laughs> They'll find a way, I'm sure. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and so, some PvP news quickly before we go on to our main discussion. Um, so, the Tournament of Legends returns on the fifth and sixth of November, uh, hosted by Academy Gaming. So, uh, if you have a PvP team, you can sign up to potentially win legendary weapons, gems, precursors, um, you know, loads of cool stuff like that. Um, so sign up and have a go. Uh, there's both EU and NA versions, and I think, I think I'm pretty sure you can sign up like right now. They've been open for uh, I think, about a day or so. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, we'll post a link in the show notes, and Sandra can post them in the chat for mm -hmm. anyone who may be interested. Uh, go and have a look. And there is also in PvP news a uh, poll up that Arena Net have been threatening to do for a while now um, on. Basically, if season five uh, should include a solo slash duo queue, um, and currently yes has a really large majority, about seventy eight percent. So mm -hmm. it looks likely that that's probably going to happen for season five, which um, I'm all right with. I think you know most competitive. If you want to be like a competitive, you know, PvP esports scene, then I think having a solo queue is slash duo queue is quite important. Because it's all about, you know, your kind of skill then. Right. Um, yeah, they said that they're going to um, re-poll the community after if it gets voted in now. Yeah, so to see if they want to implement it uh, permanently. Yeah. According to Astralaria, there's a new post about balance on the forums right now in the middle of our show. Oh, look so at if, that. if someone wants to go and check it out and give us the TLDR live yeah. or the link we will uh, maybe incorporate it into the show a little bit later on. Um, okay. but yeah, they've been threatening to do balance stuff for a while now as well. So mm -hmm. um, it'll be interesting to see what's actually happening because chronomancers everywhere are frightened for their chrono tanking capabilities in raids. Um, epi necros are scared <laughs> that their epis will no longer be viable. Um, uh, I saw some comments on Reddit that uh, Revenant people are starting to fear for the viability of Revenant now. So, mm, I don't well, know. Well, yeah, because if if Chrono Tanking goes, well, I'm not. Uh, see, I like playing Chronomancer, but I don't like the idea of a Chrono Tank or just tanking. So, I would actually Oops. like to see some more viability for other Chrono builds kind of work in well if uh, if someone can link us the balance stuff i can potentially try and skim it while sandra is talking about the community yeah. news do, do, do. off you go um so in community news we have a lot of things our community has been really active um 
this is sort of community news, sort of game slash community news. Uh, if you've been following uh, the Tyrion Travels short stories that have been posted on the forum, not the forums, on their uh, Guild Wars 2 blog, uh, Tyrion Travels Chapter 3 is out. And this is a cute little story um, following Vicky the Asura and her pink moa, Momo. Um, this was the the characters that came up out of a um, Momocon convention discussion on narrative design that Leah Hoyer and uh, Ross, whose name I, surname I forget now, um, paneled or had, li- had led the panel at the convention. So what they did was they essentially crowdsourced uh, in, and built this backstory for this character. And she, she's got chapter three out now, or she, they have chapter three out now, and uh, it takes them into further into Caledon Forest, and they have an encounter with the Tengu that guard the gate uh, leading up to the Dominion of Winds. Um, these are really cute stories. They don't really, so far, they haven't made them relevant to anything that's going on in game. You'll get the occasional um, mention of some of the events that are going on in game, like the Fire Island chain go- coming in that wasn't mentioned in Chapter 2. But other than that, they're just kind of like one off stories. They're cute if you want uh, just a little flavor of some uh, Tyrion fiction then check them out indeed yeah and um nike has a um, i mentioned this a couple of i guess because of a couple of weeks ago now he's got episode two now out on his uh, pve series called meta shift and uh, this episode covered fractal instabilities um i'm not a, i'm not usually a meta player as rowan knows well <laughs> um, um, but I found I like to follow up and see what's going on. Um, so it's interesting to talk about. He was talking about uh, how Necro now, because of some of the changes, Necro is not really worth bringing into a party, which kind of makes me sad because I like playing Necro. Um, but that Guardian and Mesmer are, are more viable now. Um, so yeah, the what else? So Pink that, that day. video, if you want to check. Hmm? Pink day. Well, yeah, Pink Day in L.A. is coming, um, and uh, it is coming on, I think it's the 22nd, isn't it? I think October? so. Yes, yeah. 22nd of <laughs> October. I've helpfully put this in our show notes, and I completely ignored my own notes. Um, it will be at 12 p.m. Central Time in both Guild Wars 1 and Guild Wars 2. Um, if you would like to donate prizes, in-game prizes, to the event, the event is... Uh, it raises money for the Canadian Cancer Society. Um, but if you'd like to uh, donate prizes, you have until October 16th to get your donations in to contact Malibu Barbie. And you can contact her via Twitter at Barbie1337 or in game. Um, her in game name is Yalith. That's Y A I L I T H dot 4056. Um, this is always a worthy cause, and a lot of the community gets behind it and and helps raise money for. Um, it's just a really good cause. Uh, it's it's just a really good cause. Yeah. I mean, cancer just affects so many people, um, sadly. Um, yeah. So it's a, just a good cause to get behind. Um, so if you are wanting to check them out, head to at Pink Day in LA on Twitter. Um, you can also visit their website, uh, which is pinkday.gamergivingback.com. And yeah, get check them out. Give them give them some support. It'll be a good good day of streaming. Uh, we'll be doing some uh, reporting that day. Yeah, we'll uh, be. So you can we'll, follow. We'll be live tweeting. So if you can't make the day, make sure you follow Goldmag on Twitter. Um, mm-hmm. And if anything, just you know, if you can afford to donate a couple of dollars towards the cause, I really do you know, recommend you guys do. They do have um, donation prizes for. Um, people who do donate um, mm-hmm. and uh, there's loads you know in-game events going on in both Guild Wars 1 and Guild Wars 2 on the day as well so make sure you head down to Lion's Arch in either of those games um, check out the uh, Gaming World Entertainment Network radio as well because they'll be doing a load of um, radio based events I think that's where they're giving away some legendary weapons if I'm yes. not mistaken Yes, um, so there are tons of in-game prizes to get your hands on mm-hmm. um, and it's just a really really worthwhile course and they're hoping to raise uh, $13,370 this year and last yeah. year 
they raised 15,000. So it'd be awesome mm-hmm. if, you know, if we could smash that. Yeah. Um, Just a little PSA, it, you, your donations will get converted into Canadian dollars. So don't get frightened by any exchange, currency yeah. exchange fees. That and you it all make. goes uh. straight to the uh, Canadian Cancer Society. So mm-hmm. yep. have a look. Um, and that's uh, Pink Day in LA. Yeah. Um, so we're going to move on because we've spent quite a lot of time doing news. So I have mm-hmm. just read the um, balance stuff. There's not much yet. It was just basically Gail Gray giving a um, heads up. Yeah, heads up about a couple of changes. Um, so big thanks to Astralaria, excuse me, to um, for giving me the link. So what we were saying earlier seems to have come true. Um, <laughs> so the three things uh, that Gail talked about, and she's posting on behalf of the skills team. Um, so firstly, Druid's uh, base healing stat values are getting reduced. So that um, basically you will need to have, like, so base stats are getting reduced and the scaling from healing power is getting increased um, because they want Druid's to be, um, let's see here, so the reason for these changes is that while we're excited about the Druid being an incredibly strong healer, we would also like to see that role as one of many choices in your attribute build. So, I mean, I kind of disagree with this because Druids, as they stand, already have three things they can do. So you can go the typical, like, Pug, Magi, slash, Zealot, you know, healer and just focus mm-hmm. mostly on your know, pure heals. Um, you also have Condi Druids, um, which are primarily like Condi damage dealers and also spread Grace the Land with like very, very minor healing. And then you have mm-hmm. like Power Zerk Druids that do like the same sort of thing, but just not Condi damage, just pure physical. So I kind of, I actually think Druids in a really good place at the moment. So it'll be interesting to see what this kind of does because it kind of, if you want like a healer druid, it kind of forces your druid to be like full magi's now. And I have this discussion with my raid group actually, and I really don't like full magi druid because I think they overheal quite a lot. Um, so Maybe I'm quite you're doing like zealots at some point. Yeah, I I personally advocate zealots because it's the damage is still pretty rubbish, but it's better than you know having no damage as magi's and overhealing a lot. Um, so I'm an advocate for zealots, and no one else agrees with me, and that's make me, that makes me really sad. But I'm sticking to my guns because I think Mage Eyes just overheals a lot. Um, so it's gonna be interesting mm-hmm. to see if druids like just get pushed to like full Mage Eyes now, which most do like already. To be fair, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, we'll see what happens with druid there. The bigger, I guess, arguably changes um, are revenants probably won't be raiding anymore. Oh, um, so the uh, boon from their naturalistic resonance skill, uh, which is like the Herald upkeep right. uh, F, F2 skill, um, basically its base boon duration is getting reduced. Um, and that's like the only reason you really bring Revenant into a party um, to mm-hmm. help your chrono tank out with their boon duration to get it up to 100%. And um, now they're also going to be nerfing it looks like regulating yes. right fixed duration on signet of inspiration they are oh, also man. nerfing like basically the boons that chrono chronos can put out as well um oh boy. so the meta um, is shifting <laughs> the meta is shifting so what it looks like now is something that people were theorizing is going to come true is raid comps are going to be five five mirror comps so like a druid and a chrono in each um in each group and then um, you'd have you only have like four DPS. Wait, am I doing that right? Four, five, six. No, I'm not. My maths isn't great today. That's four <laughs> That's used okay. up, and then you have six. Yeah, you have six DPS slots left, um, which would also have to include your PS warriors. So basically, just four DP. Yeah, four DPS slots. So PS, a Crone, and a Druid in each group, and then four DPS, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, it's I don't know what, I mean at this point because we don't have the values it's kind of quite hard to um, yeah. and she hasn't said when these are coming into the game no I'm mm-hmm. imagining well I feel like it might be like in November um, 
Because isn't that mm-hmm. what, isn't like we got the next quarterly update should be due around surely yeah. like a month or I, I two. I forgot about the quarterly update. So that's normally yeah. when they do like balance patches. So mm-hmm. um, I feel like I'm was. I've been telling like our raid group this. I feel like that's when the next row you down balance stuff will so probably like come in. So like end of November probably because yeah. we've been doing the quarterly updates at the end end of the second month and a quarter. Yeah, so um, that's probably when it's going to happen. Um, so I think they're doing it now because, like Gail said, um, these changes may require some stat swapping on your gear. So we'll see where this leads. Um, and Astralia brings up that they are nerfing Revmas Druid because of uh, what we were. World be world fights. Yeah, it's. Oh, they said the balance patches this month. Well, that's interesting. Did they actually say yeah, it in there? Did I just totally miss that. She's well. It might have been. It might be down further. She says it's in another forum post. It may be down further into the thread. Oh, okay. Um. I'm scanning. So something. yeah, I think certainly from just my point of view, from like a raid PVE perspective, uh. I'm going to have to find a new main, because I main, main Revenant at the moment, because it's just like the easiest class to play, because you don't really do anything. Well, so guess your Druid can Guess that my Druid's going to have to go to group 1. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I think um, just scanning the forum, there's quite a few people that are not happy with uh, the, the changes from like a PvE raiding perspective. Um, mm-hmm. Because I actually don't think, like the meta for raiding isn't in the a bad a bad spot necessarily i mean you do kind of rely on having a chrono tank so in that sense it's like you know the old waiting in you know wow's raid find or whatever looking for a tank to mm-hmm. go and raid sort of thing but that's that's kind of always going to happen because you know there's always going to be one best like way to run it and you know, potentially to tank it so yeah. if it's not chrono tank it's just going to be like I don't know, like Minstrel Deli or something as a tank, which is a legitimate thing, by the way. I was uh, gonna say, uh, is that legitimate? That is a legitimate um, way to tank if you really want to. Um, the uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I, it does kind of bring up the question of um, skill splitting again. Yeah, uh, it seems like any time they start bringing in or announcing balance changes, this becomes a question that people start asking. Indeed. Um, anyway, hopefully um, we might find out more uh, mm-hmm. in the next week or two, and we'll be able to do, I guess, a bit, a uh, bit more of a deeper dive on this next week if we get some more information um, and give people who know what they're talking about time to analyze it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's move on to the current event stuff, the thing that we are here to talk about. Yes. Um, and I've lost my place in the notes, which is brilliant. Just... Here we go. Um, <laughs> So, current events. Something unusual is happening at Gilscale Pond. I had no idea where Gilscale Pond was until I, I looked at the Yeah, I took, when, I, when it first came out, I went onto the wiki straight away and, and Googled. <laughs> or it's not Googled, but I searched. But then um, Ruby went and put a link, actually, to it into Twitter. So that was a bit helpful <laughs> for those of us who were at work. Um, so, yeah, so it's just... Ah. To start this, I'll actually try saying some words. Um, you basically mm-hmm. want to find the Class 1 uh, Magic Rift at Gilscale Pond in Fields of Ruin uh, and jump through it. And it's just this big, like, purple, purpley rift thing that you can't really miss. Um, yeah. So you wanted to know what they looked like in Guild Wars 1. Yeah. Oh, shoot you a link. No, Excellent. that's the wrong link. <laughs> um, and so you jump through it and you basically... Um, end up in the air and then like drop down into the pond Um, and if you dive down actually into that pond um, you'll find this like mysterious device Um, Mm -hmm. let's have a look at the chaos rift chaos rift oh Oh, i remember them do you remember these now i remember those yeah what did you actually have to do to them though you had to basically kill the um the guardians and then in order to get to the rift itself, in order to basically weaken the rift. Mm. They were portals to the realm of torment. Mm. Well then, thank you. I remember Mm -hmm. now. Yeah, so... um, What was I saying? Uh, Gilskull Pond has these chaos rifts. So you get (laughs) the uh, mysterious device, and then you go and talk to a char called Oris Weirdbringer, which is the best name (laughs) ever. It is. Um... And he basically turns it, or he, he takes a look at it, and he like turns it into this like rift 
destabilizer thing kind of identifies what it does and fixes it up a little bit um, and then if you use if you like activate this and then go and use it next to the rift um, you'll first be met with a series of I think it's like circles and spirals um, mm. and then if you get them all to be a spiral on your skill bar so it's like one two three four five and um, I never worked out how to do this by the way I just failed the event but it managed to work anyway so <laughs> did you actually get them all to turn into a spiral Mm-mm. okay no. so I'm not the only one and I was just I was, they're pressing them I was like there's probably a way like a way to do this properly but I was too impatient to figure it out so I just spammed yeah. the keys until like hoping it would just work there is a there is a guide on this one do you you said you were following I was following uh, Dolphy's Dolphy, guide but her her like the only thing she said is just get them all to a spiral so I was like okay yeah <laughs> I had no idea how to actually and then do it that. gives you a certain skill and I think what it does according to uh, what I was checking out on the wiki itself was that it, it makes you spawn into different different locations or gives you locators locator yeah so mark. you um once you manage to do that you can you get um, your skill bar will turn into just having one skill on it once you activate this and it has like a number one through to 13 i think so every mm. time you activate this skill it will increase in value once um and if you go through this class one magical rift once for each of those numbers so you do it for number one and then you do it for number two um eventually do it all the way up to i think it goes to 13 yes um and doing so it takes you across various locations interior so you end up in like uh black citadel and holbrack and like even like in awe um and at the top of the like zephyrite ship in dry top oh wow okay um so if you haven't done that i think that's still the highest point in the game if i'm not mistaken Thanks. unless it got beaten by something if it got um, beaten by the one in Bloodstone Fen, but I don't think it did. I've got oh, that's a good point. Um, mm. But yeah, you can jump off that for I think it gives you an achievement. Anyway, that's beside the point. Um, <laughs> and so yeah, you go through all thirteen, and then you go back through it one last time, and it will break your device. Um, and you go back and talk to Oris again. And um, I think it's at this point he acts like he hasn't seen you, or it's the point before. I can't quite remember which point he acts like he hasn't seen you before. But um, that in itself is like is quite interesting um, because it's kind yeah. of like messing with this whole idea of time and time travel okay. things. I was going to say, is it is it just a, a fault in the writing of his dialogue, or was no? It it's like, like a it's a done? proper because you're like, what you've you know, didn't you remember mm. me or you know stuff like that? Oh, um, how interesting! And then he comes back with something like, "You told me this was a rift stabilizer," whereas first time around he was the one that told you that i think um so mm. it's super like he first he doesn't remember you and then he's like you told me this was this and it's you know it's it's all kind of jumbled up in a sense um okay and so doing that he will then give you a class two stabilizer um which puts two different number like combinations on your skill bar instead of one so you can do things like you know 97 and you know, whatever number combination you want and this mm. allows you to go through the class two magic rifts um, and currently, this doesn't actually really do anything. It will like teleport you to random locations based on um, what combination you put in. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a really useful table on Dolphy's um, guide that will tell you like where each one takes you, and some of them just don't do anything. Um, and some of them, there's a chance for you to become hostile to allies. Uh, you turn into an... I think you actually turn into an anomaly, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't actually I done that, that bit. Um, yeah, and I... you can just get outright killed by, you know, friendly play friendly yeah. player characters. Mm. Um, but apart from that, there's nothing else really attached to this yet. Um, so it's interesting to see what's going to happen because there's no, like, a achievement for this, I don't think. Um, and the way, like, the class 2 builds on the class 1, does this mean, like, we're going to go all the way up to, like, class 5 and you're going to have to be inputting, like, 5-digit, you know, numbers combinations mm. into it because that seems like a stupid amount of possible combinations <laughs> um but yeah it's definitely just playing on this whole you know magic's going awol at the moment and mm. you know rifts popping up everywhere and what we've been seeing with the anomalies um you know in places like yeah, i think it's timberline falls and Gendarin i can't remember the that maps but yeah iron marches yeah yeah um I find I find this idea of 
the chaos uh, caused by magic or the excess of magic really, really interesting. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they continue to do with it since um, the other current event uh, was... I lost my place on my notes. Uh, The other current event, Burden of Choice, basically tries to address this with the player specifically, and you decide whether or not you want to continue to be crazy. (laughs) So, should we... Let's, let's put yeah. a pin in that because there was some other stuff I wanted to talk about with yeah, other anomalous stuff first. And guys, yeah. if you have any thoughts or theories uh, about you know things to do with anomalies or the latest current events or anything that's been going on, um, you know, since the last episode, do let us know in chat, either in the Guild Mag Twitch chat or in the Guild Wars Two. We are reading both. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I thought it was quite interesting that you going through the class 2 portal will sometimes make you physically like into an anomaly um and it's kind of a lot of people have been questioning since you know these anomalies have appeared um like what actually are they um and there's been several theories floating around one of them was actually um in specifically in relation to the sad anomalies it's on reddit a theory was that they were I think like people stuck in the mists trying to get mm-hmm. back like Ritlock. I'm not like entirely convinced about that theory. Uh, it was a bit more poetically written than that. I've just kind of yeah. really butchered it. Um, but there's, I've read, there's I've read the it well, thing yeah. too is like, are we if we're all connected to magic, are we also, in a sense, made of magic? I don't know if that makes any kind of sense, but. I guess. Um, if you go into Lion's Arch, I don't know if you can still do this, but you could about a month or so ago. You could jump into the Mystic Forge, and if you have to, you have to toggle on walk so that it won't throw you out. Um, but if you got to stay in the liquid itself, you would turn into essentially just what an anomaly looks like. So it's like your being, your the essence of your being is lay energy i guess well i guess Magical that energy that kind of puts the are these just people from the mists kind of maybe in a potentially like an astralaria says i think more rifts are coming i definitely agree there i think yeah, I agree that. we're not done with the whole you know class two three four whatever system of rifts um so that um i hope we can see what's on the other side um i think it would be quite interesting to see if they maybe like physically you know open up a little bit to be able to like take a little peek in you know like we have yeah. with the um you know the mad king like doors you can they don't actually yeah. show you what's on the other side but you can still kind of like skybox you mm-hmm. know and see in there a little bit um i think yeah. some of that might be really interesting to have a little like teaser of what's what's happening um, i think what's in- what's interesting too is that they went and i don't know if they've what people call retcon uh, the old leyline energy events, but the old leyline energy events from earlier current events are now um, have got the class one, class two rifts appearing, whereas before it was just you'd fight the creatures to yeah. try and close the the lay energy rift. So uh, that's it, interesting that that they have evolved in a way. Well, right. yeah, it's I, I speaking like on the topic of like evolution, it's. We've seen from like these sad, the sad anomalies that your character is presented with as visions that these things potentially have like feelings and are you know sentient in mm-hmm. a way, um, and even like the anomalies that you you know the giant legendary ones that you chase through, um, you know like Timberline Falls and whatnot. Um, there are arguments. It's like I saw a lot of people comment on this. It's like these anomalies don't really know what's going on. You know, they just spawn. And they start running, and all of a sudden, this zerg of players just starts trying to kill them. It's like mm-hmm. no wonder they're trying to, like, you know, fight back. Uh, but mm-hmm. like one sec. Yep. Carry on talking. Okay. You know, it is it is really interesting. I mean, if you go into and fight these leyline anomaly events, the legendary ones that spawn in Gandaran and um, uh, Iron Marches and uh, Timberline. Uh, you know, because they do get these these uh, zergs after them, the mechanics that come out of that, with just the and the anomalies trying to survive or <laughs> trying to kill you, is to get back as they try to make their way around the map. Um, you know, they do they do show this sentience and this kind of um, I guess I don't want to say human intuition, but sort of intuition. I so 
hello. Um, Hi. Yeah, it does. It does bring that up. Like, what are these anomalies? Um, should we really be be killing them? Um, I don't think we should. And if and if like you're talking about with this uh, the the part where Oris doesn't recognize you, it's playing with that idea of time or going through rifts and coming back in a different quote unquote, quote unquote dimension. Um, are we killing ourselves? <laughs> you see this. So this reminds me of a game that um, I really loved. So anyone played the game called Nia. Um, so in this yeah, game, I game. Uh, yeah, I've told something about this so many times. It was one of my favorite games ever, and it it was a game that not many people actually ever knew about or already played. It had a really good story. Um, and if anyone's ever planning on playing this, this is a total spoiler, so go away now. Um, mm -hmm. But it was there were these things called like shades which were enemies and they basically you can think of them like the guild was to anom uh, anomalies they were just like shadowy creatures that you were just forced to kill throughout the game because they were they weren't particularly hostile to, well they were hostile to you but you know you kind of actively just sought them out to kill them um and it was revealed kind of at the end that these were actually the souls of humans that you've been killing um and it was a really like hard thing to swallow because it was like this whole game you've basically been killing your own kind um, yeah. So it'd be really awesome to have something like that in Guild Wars too, because it was a really like emotional, super emotional moment. Um, right. And with the fact that they're in like humanoid form, and yes. that we, I mean, even as a char going through uh, one of those magic rifts, you get transformed into one. But um, yeah, we get transformed into these anomalies essentially going through these rifts. It does make you wonder: Are they like? Are they things that have just like the coalescences that have just been formed out of pure magic, or are is there like something more to them? Like, were they once you know, like human or an actual creature that's been affected by massive amounts of magic or bloodstone or you know, whatever? Because you know, the very first time we encountered this was the Veil Guardian on top of what's meant to be a bloodstone in mm. um, Spirit Veil. Right. So, I yeah. don't know. It's really interesting. Uh, and it's yeah, like, I the thing I really like about this is it's super engaging stuff that's completely outside of an actual episode. Um, and it kind of reminds me of like season one in a way, where there's yes. this stuff to do. Um, it's kind of like a mix between season one and season two, what we're getting right now, where there's stuff to mm -hmm. do like in the open world, um, as well as like regular instance like fully dialogue um you know like gameplay yeah. i'm just spouting buzzwords now i'm trying to form it's a okay. sentence from what i mean but yeah, yeah. um astralari brings up in chat uh that you can still jump into the mystic forge but uh that someone on reddit posted that your look changed after you did the priori the priori uh, consortium quest the burden of choice which we're going to talk about in a bit mm -hmm. And uh, TK brings up um, wanting to know that he's never, or yeah, he's never done the, any of the legendary leyline events. Do we get anything special from them? You get just loot um, for completing it, but what it does is that completing or actually just participating in the event did allow you to trigger the client side see, um, ability to see the sad these anomalies. the sad anomalies. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, so you do, if you want Mystic Coins, you actually get a daily Mystic Coin from doing the um, yeah. Legendary event, so it is mm -hmm. uh, worthwhile doing that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, you do get a decent bit of loot, um, and there's some achievements and stuff. I don't think there's any gear tied to the achievements themselves. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't actually completed them fully. I've only done, like, a couple of those events, so... Yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, and, and be prepared okay. for a big Zerg. Yeah. <laughs> um, so moving on to... Burden of Choice, um, which is, strangely, like a quest. Yeah. Like, questing is back in Guild Wars 2, and you know, it actually works for an achievement. Like, the way they've yeah. done it, it, actually, I actually quite enjoyed it, because I knew kind of what I had to do um, without having to rely on, like, an external guide for this bit, necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because it, it did give you all of the steps right there listed in the achievement yeah. itself. Um, and we get to go and speak to Ogden and do a bit of priory stuff. Um, so, have you done this? Have you done this? I, I have. I was really excited because I, b 
been months now, one of my uh, guildies has been able to see the sad anomalies, and I have not. And so every time she sees one, um, she would ping me and be like, I just saw one, oh my God, it just freaked me out. And I was like, I want to be scared too. And so I finally got in, um, and I chased down one of these uh, legendary ley line anomalies. Um, and all really you need in order to trigger burden of choice is uh, to see an anomaly. Once you get the anomaly sighted achievement that's in the current events category, apparently that's all you really needed mm -hmm. in order to trigger them from show, to show up client side. Um, and that's how you end up opening up. Once you see the next anomaly that you see, you go run up to it and you can interact with it and it, it triggers burden of choice to open. And I will say that it scared the crap out of me when I saw it. <laughs> Um, because I hadn't, I wasn't expecting it. I was just running around in Holbrook, and and it, there, all of a sudden, it was. Um, but yeah, I I liked that. I liked being able to see them. Um, but what it, now? What was your experience? Had you been able to see them before? No. So I was actually quite late doing this. Why so did it a couple of days ago? So I was like actively looking out for the sad anomaly to you know just to be able to complete the achievement so I could talk mm -hmm. about it today. Um, so I was quite late to it, but I definitely saw like a load of Reddit posts when it was, yeah, you know, it first came out of people like freaking out about it. Um, mm -hmm. and it's a super cool thing, and it like it it definitely plays with the whole you know your characters maybe going a little bit crazy because of all this you know magic that's building up inside of them. Um, so it was really nice um, touch. So speaking of like I guess the achievement and the quest, we'll call it itself. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to do, can you remember what you have to do to be able yes. to do a quick rundown of it? Yeah. So if you've done uh, the Bloodstone Harvest, uh, basically scavenger hunt from a couple of current event patches ago, it was the one that gave you the Bloodstone Visage, the glowy eyes and the floaty shards of Bloodstone or whatever floating around your head. If you did that one, it made Burden of Choice go faster because you automatically got uh, four things on the quest log basically checked off. Yeah. Um, but once you trigger it, you have to go and speak to Ogden, Stone Healer, down in the Priory Archives. And he basically says, yeah, you've, you've got an excess of magic. And, and I, I know you've been seeing some weird things. And um, he starts talking to you about the Seers. And that maybe you should go and talk to Tranton, which is another Priory uh, historian. Um, who's just hanging out in the library across the way. So when you go and talk to him, he gives you um, a, a seer artifact called the Shadow Stone. And uh, he says that it doesn't work. So if you could go out and go put it back together, essentially, to try and make it work again. But he thinks that since the seers were constantly being exposed to large amounts of magic whilst they were putting together the bloodstone, um, that they had to have a way to basically restabilize themselves. And so uh, you're tasked with going out and collecting four bloodstone slivers. So if you've already done bloodstone harvest, those are the slivers. Um, and then the quest log says to go and talk to uh, tradesman Ma Maze. Maze is a consortium. <laughs> yeah. He's a consortium, um, Astura, who's just hanging out in uh, Lion's Arch. He popped up and a while ago, but yeah. um, I'll let you. I'll let you finish, and then we'll. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, he. So Maze is. Uh, he's really shady. I just immediately got a really bad vibe from him. The, the consortium. Just kind of. I don't. I don't really trust them. <laughs> um, but he just knows a lot way too much information about what's happening at the Priory, what's happening with the player characters specifically, and says, no, no, you don't want to you trust those Priory guys. They don't know what they're doing. But I'll sell you a bottle of this refined crate oil here. It's made from all natural ingredients, so what could possibly go wrong? It's like these bad infomercial <laughs> salesman tactics. Um, and you give us that shadow stone that they gave you, and we'll just call it even. That will cure you. Yeah, they they make this claim that the Priory like doesn't know what they're getting you into and it's not safe for you to use this shadow stone, yeah. but the consortium knows what it's for, but they can't reveal it. And right. they actually send you um a mail 
um, after you've got the shadow stone, I think, to say, mm -hmm. um, or after you've got the slivers or something, um, yeah. to say, come and come, come and speak and to tradesman, to tradesman Maze, uh, before you go running off back to the priory. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, and they they basically say you know, they know everything. They've got like yeah. agents everywhere, so they knew you were on this quest to like put the shadow stone back together. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they've got a. Order of Whispers vibe, yeah. in that sort of spy game secrecy, um, and even in with the White Mantle, they've got their spies in the different orders as well. We've we've found out, so I don't know. There's just a lot of there's a lot of espionage and intelligence gathering going on in Tyria these days. Yeah, it's a very shady place. Um, yeah. So yes, yeah, so Maze is selling this bottle of crate oil, which is obviously just a thing on snake oil. Um, mm -hmm. And and Naga oil from Guild Wars One, which That's was right. a thing, yes. um, and so you basically have this choice to make: like, do you um, accept this, um, accept Maze's offer for the crate oil to cure you, or mm -hmm. do you go back to uh, Tranton and um, use the Shadow Stone, mm -hmm. basically, to try and mm -hmm. cure you? Um, yeah. And so Speckman asks, uh, what's the reward for this event? So doing this at the moment, I don't think there's actual any sort of like gear reward. It's just mm -hmm. the outcome of whatever you choose is the reward that will, we're assuming, have lasting effects with other stuff down the road. So I know a lot of people at the moment are actually just refusing to make the choice to see like what happens later on down the road. Um, but I did make a choice. Did you? And... So my Did reason, you? I had a very good reason for this. You're in the, so the consortium are this like mercantile, you know, wannabe like conglomerate mm -hmm. with their like fingers and all the pies, yes. and one day trying to take over the Black Lion Trading Company mm -hmm. with. So that means they're automatically against Mr. Evan Nashblade, who is a char. No. So, so is this your reasoning for voting so against? Naturally, them? I can't support Azura's over Char, <laughs> so I had to go with the Priory yeah. and give um, Tranton the Shadow Stone. And so when you do that, um, you get this like light show basically on your screen, and uh, everything goes a bit weird for a minute, and then it seems to have worked. So people report that once you do this, you no longer see sad anomalies. Mm -hmm. um, so you, I assume it works, but you don't actually know what the lasting effects of what doing mm -hmm. it is. Because even Tranton says, like, I have no idea what's going to happen, but it seems like the best course of action. Right. Um, and I've seen and I've seen people reporting the same thing that if you chose to help the consortium, because I chose to help the Priory as well, because I do not trust the consortium at all. The thing is, <laughs> I don't trust Tranton either. So well, people, I, I, I don't okay, know if you yeah. saw this on Reddit. Um, mm -hmm. But for some people, myself included, Tranton completely changed his appearance between oh, two times you see him. So for most people, I go, I seem to have got the reverse way around. But for most people, the first time you see him is he looks like a Canton young man with okay. like an assassin mask covering his you know half of his face, mm -hmm. um, just like he's straight out of Canter, and he's got right. like short dark hair. Short dark hair, yes. Second time you see him, he's a middle-aged Caucasian man with ginger hair. Like, completely oh, I didn't know different I didn't face. catch that at all. I'm and this to happened to me, but the other way again. around. So the first time I saw him, he was the ginger guy. Ginger. Second time, he was uh, Canton. Um, hmm. And I don't know if this is just, like, some sort of, like, actual bug in the game, or if this is... On top of all the other crazy stuff that's going on, like, is this intentional? Well, especially with the um, the Gilscale Pond thing, yeah, and the the dimension traveling that seems to have happened, yeah, absolutely. Is that is that playing off of that? Because it's interesting that they put both of these into the game with this last patch last week. Um, what? Why? And I I think they've got to. I mean, these current event patches, they, they have been making us think, um, speculating, and, and just continuing to figure out what are they doing. And I just think if they are playing with this, this idea of dimension travel, 
That's just really interesting. It is, but... Oh, go on. No, no, I was just going to say, what... How do we know that anything that we experience is going to be, um, I don't know, reliable? Yeah, it's it's super interesting, but on the flip side, it's also like if you start getting into like time travel, dimension travel, and all that, like from a storytelling point of view, it gets super like complicated and complicated. easy to just completely retcon anything at any point. Because it'd be like, oh, this just happened in a different timeline or we'll just go back in time and resurrect air or stop her from ever dying or you know right so it in that sense it makes i kind of hope that we don't go with a time travel that's suddenly freely accessible kind of route um yeah because it just it's it's not very guild wars 2 i don't feel like we have chronomancers and you know some like limited essentially like time travel stuff but mm -hmm. like full scale like let's go you know, back in time to when Oris didn't remember us and let's go back in time to somehow change to be a Canthan young guy yeah. instead of an old ginger guy. Um, but this idea of well. that... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no it's fine. Go on. Um, this idea of... <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck on this idea of the Chaos Rifts and um, the Realm of Torment from Guild Wars 1 and... One of the things that's out in, um, let's see, I think it's one of WP's uh, speculation videos that he just released this week. He starts speculating that the next raid may be, like, taking us into Realm of Torment as a possibility. And we're down in the Fire Island chain. I would love that. Like, Realm of Torment and, is my favorite place ever. Yeah. Um, this connection with the mists that we have going on, the anomalies that might be echoes of people who are stuck in between the plane, between the mists and the physical realm. Um, I, it, it, it could really... They have some possibilities here to play, I think. If they were able to start playing with this idea of Realm of Torment and the mists and where, where what we do with that, that fine line between. It would know. be... Yeah, it would be... It would be super interesting. Um, and there was some various, like, there's a massive thread on Reddit right now about um, theory of, like, time travel and mm. um, everything that was released a couple of hours ago. Um, and there's various arguments about why it'd be cool, why it wouldn't be. Um, and there were some really interesting theories about, um, some like, guy pointed out in Dragon Age Inquisition, which you haven't played yet, um, mm. that there's this one, like, mission where you get to see what the future would have been like if you hadn't have intervened. And so stuff like that would have been kind of cool, because they th they've done this in WoW, I think. I think it was like Cataclysm or something, where there's a raid mm -hmm. that shows you what the world would have been like if like one particular event um, hadn't happened. Um, so that would be kind of cool to do in Guild Wars 2, like a raid, like an alternate future raid that's, that ties into all this, you know, anomalous magic going on at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, oh, what would happen if I don't know, you killed all the Elder Dragons or you didn't kill all the Elder Dragons, right. you know, whatever's the most like... I mean, and we have been trying, we have been sort of questioning that since Season 2, you know, is it a good idea to be killing off all of these dragons? Um, yeah. And it does give you... I guess kind of like Fractals do, it gives you a chance to explore things that don't necessarily have to be canon in-game, but would just mm -hmm. be cool to, like, create experiences around. So I guess we'll... We'll see what happens in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, yeah, it's just, I think too, I'm thinking back to, you know, this idea of what would happen if Marjorie has just left with, with Lazarus. And there's a lot of speculation about whether or not she's going to try and get him to help her resurrect Belinda. What would happen if you could, if your sister didn't die, for example, or what would happen if I don't know, Ritlock didn't jump in after his sword and didn't become Revenant. I don't know. There's a lot of possibility here, though. I like... I, I don't know. I've got, to, I've got to think about this a bit more, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's certainly... For, like, only a couple of hours of content, there's a lot to... You know, there's a lot of possibilities and a lot of what-ifs. Um, so I think we're reaching the end of our hour. Unless um, you have anything else you want to bring up, I think we will leave it there for the discussion for now. Yeah, Astralaria oh, brings up that there are there's an NPC in Ember Bay that also changes appearance. Well. 
So this is interesting to see what they're going to be really, playing up with this. I really hope it's not a bug and it's something that's just going to blow my mind. If it's a bug, I'm going to be kind of disappointed. I'm like, oh. Mm. But it would, I mean, it would make sense in like, how does one guy completely change his race? Uh, is it's, yeah. it's kind of questionable, but we will see. Anyway, yes. um, so some final little announcements before we head off. Uh, so the guildmag.com website is now back online after an extended period of downtime. Yes. Um, so thank you to everyone who stuck with us. Um, Streamwise. Tuesday, are you pot potentially back? Potentially back because my uh, motherboard should be arriving today <laughs> again. And Halloween will be here. Yes. So, so maybe might be streaming Halloween some Halloween stuff. stuff. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. um, so Wednesdays is Aaron's stream happening on Wednesday? He's waiting for internet. He just moved, so okay. He's... So Wednesday's pro potentially not, but uh, next Thursday at. Um, 9 p.m. GMT, 10 p.m. if you're in the UK, and 2 p.m. Pacific time on twitch.tv forward slash guildmag. We will be back with the next guildmag podcast, um, probably talking more about balance changes, maybe a bit more on anomaly stuff if any new things come out. Probably some stuff on Halloween, just because, yeah. you know, it's Halloween time. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, so a big, big thank you to everyone who's joined us, both in the Guild Wars 2 and the Guildmag Twitch chats. Um, we do read them both and we really appreciate your support if you missed any part of this episode and you want to watch it uh, you can watch the VOD on youtube.com slash guildmag or on guildmag.com itself um, and again feel free to leave your comments on our website or on YouTube we do read them and we are, we are also on iTunes and Google I think we're on Google Play Music we're meant to be yeah, we should be back now since but, our website is back. Yeah. Because it was all tied into our if, thing. If if anyone could try and see if we're actually on Google Play and let us know <laughs> if you know whether or not we actually are or not, I would be very grateful because I'm still not <laughs> convinced it's actually worked. Um, but yeah, okay. thank you to everyone for joining us. We'll be back in a week's time. Don't forget to catch Sandra's stream on Tuesday. Uh, follow Girl Mike on Twitter. We will announce it if it's well, whether it's happening or not. Um, so yeah, thanks guys. And don't forget Pink Day in LA. Go and check it Support. out and yes. make a reminder. Bye guys. Bye.